Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at presence and basically how we use it to mask off dis different areas of geometry. Um, you can use this for things like leaves and, and other things. Um, leaves is probably the easiest example, so that's what we're going to do today. So I'm in Maya, but I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. And here is a leaf that I went outside and took a photo of. Um, after almost being stung by a hornet which was on the leaf next to it. That's fine though. What I've done is I've just cut the leaf out so it's got a um, alpha background. What we're going to do is create a mask and use uh, and create a texture layer as well and then we'll just pop this onto a plane in Maya. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer and I'm just going to control click on the leaf that I've already chopped out. I'm going to jump over into the new layer. I'm just going to create a white fill in this area anywhere that's white that's a value of one that means that it is going to be visible when we play this into the presence and you'll see this in a moment and then I'm just going to hit control shift I and um, hit X and um, fill that with black and for whatever reason this area here is not filled there we go now it is so now we've got our mask and we have got our leaf. So I might just fill that background black as well. I must have had feathering on when I made the selection for whatever reason. Um, when you have a leaf texture generally you want it to be a complete diffuse map. This is obviously a photo so you get a little bit of light reflection. I did this in my apartment. Most diffused lighting I could get but um, it's sunny outside of the moment so I couldn't do it outside. So this is what we're working with. Not perfect but otherwise you could actually do it on a scanner if you put the leaf in a scanner. I don't have my scanner set up so I can do it that way. But uh, we'll save this out. So there's going to be our, uh, we're going to call this leaf to color. I've already obviously done this. I just did it as a quick practice. I'll replace that and this is going to be our, la our mask as you can see also done and I'm saving this as a PNG because I want a bit of file depth than you would get with a JPEG it's going to be linearized in uh, RenderMan anyway but just for the sake of argument it's probably going to be a better transition from a PNG with a higher bit depth than it would be with a JPEG so generally I would recommend using a PNG or an EXR if you really want to actually go full 32 bit so we'll jump over into Maya um, what we're going to do first is create a plane. The plane is the same aspect ratio as the image, which is one by one or square. If you have a leaf that is oblong, for example, like that, you'll need to make sure that your plane is the same aspect ratio as your leaf. So, uh, for instance, if it was uh, 1500 by 1000, you'd want to make sure that the scale on the Y was 1.5, for example. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is selecting our leaf, we'll add a Pixar at uh, surface shader to it and then I'm just going to drop in a dome light so we can see everything and then we'll jump over into the hypershade editor and I'll just map out that pixar surface so we want to get our texture in which is going to be pixar texture hitting tab and then typing that in hit 3 to run that out run the RGB into the diffuse color from your pixar texture node then we'll just go to the file name we'll open up the file um, I've transferred these over to the assets folder. So we've got the color one there, or albedo map, or diffuse map, depending on what you want to call it. So now if I render this, uh, I'll just do it in there. So you'll see I've got the leaf and the black area. So the black area obviously is what we do not want. You can still see that annoying gradient, but they'll be masked off anyway, so that won't matter. So yeah, we'll hold that for now. Back in the hypershade editor, Let's remap that. So what we want to do is grab another Pixar texture and we want to run the RGBR into the presence. The presence can only take a um, alpha map normally. So if you were actually using a PNG, you could actually just, if, and you had a blank background, that's going to give it a value of zero. So for instance, if I saved this out as a PNG, this area here that's checkered is um, transparent, so it would actually work as a um, mask. But I'm just showing you in black and white because it makes it a little bit easier to interpret for the sake of the video. So you can do it either way. This way it works just the same. So we'll open up our mask. As you can see. And we will render again. And there you go. So if we flip this over, you'll notice that the leaf has got no texture on the bottom. 
So we need to create a double sided texture. That's easily done in the Pixar surface. In the diffuse channel, we'll go to advanced and we'll select double sided. And we'll talk about transmission in a, in a second, but um, for the sake of argument, this is gonna be fine. So we'll just run that IPR. And now you can see both sides have texture and both sides are masked. All right, so what if you want to use a gradient for your presence? By default, gradients don't work with presence when you're using the uh, Pixar Path Tracer integrator. Um, I will show you how to do it with the Pixar VCM integrator though. So we've got our texture here. What if we wanted to say um, with our leaf have it so the areas that were the veins were a bit more translucent so they were a little bit more, uh, sorry, a bit more transparent. Um, we could if we just did a selection, we'll go select by color range and we'll select the vein. And um, I'll just make it sort of the range low. So it's only gonna select a bit of the, a bit of the veins there and it's gonna get a little bit of the face. It's not a perfect world. You'd have to go through and select it manually if you wanted to do it exactly, but this will be fine. And I'll create a new layer. Um, and I will fill this with a sort of like 20% gray. Um, I'll just make, move that layer up so we can actually see it. All right, so now I've got this area here. So <clears throat> because this is 20% gray, 20% of the, the visibility will be passed through this. So we will save this as um, veins and I'll replace that and then we'll open this one up. So now looking at that image, the areas that are gonna be masked, the black area is gonna be masked, uh, the white area is gonna be visible, and the gray areas are gonna be slightly transparent. But if we wanted to render this, we need to go to the render settings in render man, and we'll go down to integrator, and we'll change this to Pixar VCM. And then I'm not sure if it works in this, so we'll have a look. So hard to see the difference. I might actually do IPR so I can show you a comparison of the two. Okay, so here is our leaf, just with the standard mask, so the edges are masked off. And here is our leaf with a bit more um, transparency in the veins. So you can see that a bit more light has been passed through. It's very subtle, but it could be a nice little effect. Um, if you were using this for XGen, um, this is going to create extra work for the renderer, so consider your shot. If it's going to be a close-up and you want to get a little bit of extra detail, might be worth it. If it's going to be a long shot, probably not worth it, to be honest. Now, if you are wanting to do translucency, um, I wouldn't recommend using the presence. It's probably easier just to use a transmission of color through the diffuse channel. I'll show you how to do that. So back in the Hypershade editor, um, we're just going to set our leaf back to its standard mask. And this is just gonna be a single translucency across the entire thing. It's not gonna isolate areas like the, um, <coughs> the veins. Um, you could actually do it with the veins. Um, you, can, you can increase the transmission of color. So why don't we do that? We'll just do the, we'll increase the transmission of light through the veins. So we will go into Pixar surface and we'll make sure it's double-sided. Oh, sorry. Make sure it's double-sided. Transmit game, we can set all the way up. Transmit color, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the color is being transmitted is the same as the diffuse color. So if you have the transmission set to just the color of like white, for example, uh, in your render, the side that's being illuminated will get the correct color because it will get your diffuse map, but the opposite side will just get the transmission color, uh, which is whatever you've set it to. So in this instance, it is just that gray. So we want the transmission color to be the same as our diffuse map. So we will select that node, hit three to expand it, and we'll type in transmit. Uh, we'll get transmit color. So we want to run that uh, texture color into the transmit color. So now, it's going to transmit the same color through either side. And we can define the gain of its transmission, so how much 
light has been trans transmitted um, it's set to 1.0 at the moment we can actually use if we hit pixar texture again and we will run the rgbr of that into the transmit gain and then we're going to open up pixar veins um, so why don't we make that a little bit more obvious by making the transmission of the veins white and then all right so now what's going to happen is that it's going to transmit color through the white areas and everything else is going to not transmit color so we'll save that and we'll open the new one oh, it hasn't updated it uh, so when you get this render man overlay it means this have a missing texture so i'm just gonna um i've got maya to automatically reload textures um, and it hasn't done that notice this a couple of times with render man for some reason i'll just fiddle around with it for a second get it to go all right so you kind of just need to <laughs> it's really dumb but you just kind of need to click on the nodes and then it'll sort of update itself in Maya um, and then you can render again so this is the top side and this is the bottom side so you can see that the transmission is a lot lower in certain areas and on the diffuse side obviously you can see that it's um, even the whole way across because there's no light coming from behind so therefore it's not actually transmitting anything so yeah you can use that to sort of bolster certain areas of transmission which is pretty straightforward it's subtle obviously I could have made this a lot more obvious but um, for the sake of argument that will pretty much do the trick not the best example but you get the idea so yeah that's um that's pretty much all there is to it um it's some real basic stuff with presence and just using the diffuse for some gain, gain transmission doesn't necessarily affect the presence but it does affect the visibility which is generally what you're using presence for so yeah if this video did help you out make sure you click the like button it helps other people find it and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as i do a couple of these tutorials uh every week one or two tutorials every week i'm sort of down to about one at the moment but you might see more in the future uh, if you want to check out more of my work, check out my Instagram, link in the description, as well as the Facebook page, so you can stay up to date with any tutorials coming in the future. That's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching, and happy rendering.